Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video idea was suggested by Dominica, so thank you so much for sending this suggestion in. She had the idea to talk about makeup products that I absolutely love, but rarely use. And I thought that was ingenious because it gets me the opportunity to not only talk about these products, but also remind myself why I like them so much and why I should be using them more often. So I'm gonna kick this off by talking about the Becca and Jaclyn Hill face palette that came out as a limited edition item quite a few years ago now. And I love this thing to pieces, but I never reach for it because I never think to use face palettes. For me, I get stuck in this idea that face palettes are for vacation, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that is where my mind is at. So I tend to want to bring this on vacation with me, but at the same time, I realize that the products in here are very fragile. They're so fragile, in fact, that I dropped this once and both of the highlighters smashed. I've since repressed them, they're fine, but I'm also concerned that if I bring it on vacation, now the blushes are gonna smash. So I don't tend to bring it with me on vacation and I don't tend to use it at home, which just infuriates me because the colors in here are absolutely beautiful. The only shade that I'm not a huge fan of in here is Prosecco Pop, which is that gold highlighter, just because I feel like it's a little bit too gold on my face. But Champagne Pop is beautiful, but I also have it in a single, so I'll reach for the single before I grab for the face palette. And the blushes in here are right up my alley as well. I love this color over here because it's quite a deep coral. And this one's a little bit more of a toned down neutral, whereas this one over here is a pink. It's shimmery, but it's, it's not like orgasm on your cheeks. It's not like super chunky glitter or anything like that. So the colors in here are clearly up my alley. While I don't love Prosecco Pop as much, the rest of them are absolutely beautiful, but it just comes back to the fact that I don't think to use face palettes at home. I just never think about it. I grab a bronzer and a highlighter from that drawer in my vanity, and I grab a blush from the other drawer. I never reach for face palettes, and yet this one, is beautiful so maybe I need to just like set it out on my vanity and use it more often but I hate doing that because then the vanity gets very cluttered with products that I should be using so anyway it's knockout product love this thing so much but I almost never use it so I brought out two palettes by Makeup Geek to talk about the fact that I don't use their eyeshadows that much anymore, which really makes me sad. So I brought out my orange and yellows palette and I have a blue and green palette here. I have two other palettes that are full of their shadows, but I can only hold up so much on camera. So there was a point in time where I was obsessed with everything Makeup Geek. I wanted to own all of their shadows. I've bought quite a few of them. Well, I've bought all of the ones that I have. I've never received their PR. And I used Makeup Geek constantly because I just loved the price point, I loved the shadows, but I found over time I just started to get quite bored with the brand and I started to not love how the owner was sort of portraying herself on social media. And I don't want to say anything disparaging about Marlena or how she's handling the company or anything like that because I really haven't followed the brand in quite a few years now. But I have found that if I get too invested in the owner of a brand and I discover that I don't necessarily like their personality that much, it tends to turn me off the brand as a whole. And I think that's kind of what just happened to me with Makeup Geek because I didn't really like how the brand was sort of evolving. And honestly, I think they've rebranded all of their eyeshadows now. So I don't even know if my eyeshadows are current. And even though I love them to pieces, I think these shadows are wonderful. There's just something that has turned me off the brand in recent years, so I haven't been reaching for them as much. But every time I go back to them, which is very rarely now, the pigmentation is excellent. The shadows themselves, just the range of colors is so beautiful. So I can't say anything negative about the shadows themselves other than the fact that I just started to fall out of love with the brand and it's re had a reaction to me where I just stopped using the shadows as much. But again, whenever I do reach for them, I'm very happy with the looks that I get out of them because I do feel like they're fantastic. All right, the next one. Can you believe this? I love the Kat Von D Mi Vita Loca Remix palette so intensely, and yet I barely use it. And it's truly down to the fact that this thing is so enormous and so cumbersome to pull it out and set it up as like a freaking massive palette on my dresser, or my, on my vanity, as I'm doing my makeup that I often cannot be bothered with it. Now, we're not gonna be talking about the anti-vax thing. I do not support anybody who thinks that vaxes are um, 
bad for you. I don't want to get into that discussion. I've already had it a few times on my channel. I just find this bloody packaging so ridiculous for use that it has made me not use it as much as I would want to because I love this palette. I've mentioned it so many times in the years since I purchased it and yet I almost never reach for it because it is so cumbersome. It would have been the perfect travel palette because it has all the colors of the rainbow and yet it's not because it's larger than my own head so I can't bring it anywhere with me and I never want to pull it out because it takes up so much space when I'm doing my makeup so it's like what the hell buddy <laughs> so really I could depot this whole thing and have it in a Z palette but I also do like palette packaging so even though I'm talking shit about this thing and I really do think the packaging is ridiculous I also don't want to depot it so I'm really not helping myself in any respect here but yeah, I mean, like, why did they come up with this? I know it was a holiday item and people tend to make these massive things for the holidays, but it's just too big for anybody to really use on a day-to-day -day basis. The next few items that I love very much but use very irregularly is kind of a category of products, and that's anything to do with colorful eyeliner. I like the look of colorful eyeliner. I think it's beautiful. It stands out so much, but I almost never do it because it means I have to wear a boring eyeshadow for it to show up as vibrantly as I want that liner to appear. So I'm going to talk about two brands where I think that their liners are fantastic and when I use them, I get one hell of a good eyeshadow or eyeliner look out of it, but I might only do it like twice a year, which is so sad. So Suva Beauty's Hydro Liners, they make unreal shades. This one is called Grape Soda. It's like this ultraviolet purple. It's wild. And then this one here is called Freezy and it is, I mean, basically a freezy color. And these are like um, cake pans. So you add water and then you can draw on a liner. And when you use this as an eyeliner, I usually do a big wing, it looks beautiful. But because I have to do relatively boring eyeshadow with it, because that's how I prefer to wear colorful eyeliner, I don't tend to do it because it's not very often that I want to wear a boring eyeshadow color. So the Suva Beauty Hydro Liners are ones that I love intensely. And then there's the Tarte uh, Gel Liners, which are a little bit more traditional for a colorful liner in terms of consistency. So I've got Bubble Gum here, which is this bright, bright pink another gorgeous shade. I don't tend to reach for pink a lot, but I think you can see how beautiful that would be as a thick wing. And then another one I've got here is called Crystal Ball, which is this unreal kind of purple silver shadow color that, I mean, these are all absolutely beautiful as eyeliners, but I almost always wear a black eyeliner so I don't reach for these that often even though they're absolutely wonderful to wear. There are times where I wish I was the kind of person who wore more boring eyeshadow so I could just wear these all the time and get more use out of them because I do feel like the products are fantastic but I'm just not the kind of person who puts on boring eyeshadow so I get very little use out of these. And the last two items are kind of another category as well. Liquid highlighter looks beautiful but I don't wear it. I almost never think to grab for a liquid highlighter because I'm always reaching for a powder. So I've got the Cover FX Holographic Drops here. This is the shade Halo. It's not holographic, it's just more of a blue tint. This is so beautiful on your cheek as like a strobe of uh, different colored highlighter. It's glorious. There's so much product in this tube and I paid so much money for it because it's like, what, $54? It's a lot of money for a liquid highlighter that I very infrequently use. And this other one here is by Wet n Wild. So this is their Mega Glow Hello Halo Liquid Highlighter. This shade in particular is called Halo Goodbye, but I've got a whole bunch of them. And the colors are all beautiful, but I never think to reach for a liquid highlighter, mostly because I'm always using so much powder on my face that I don't really want to add a liquid on top of it. So I think for me, I've kind of come to the conclusion that I just need to not pick up any more liquid highlighters because I won't use them even though I love them. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you're going for the $50 one or the $5 one, the liquid highlighters look absolutely beautiful on the face. I don't actually feel like there's a huge amount of difference between the two, to be honest. 
but I just don't reach for them because they are a liquid format. So even though I love them intensely, I've come to the conclusion that I just don't reach for a liquid highlighter. So I need to not pick up anything in that category because it just won't get used in my collection, no matter how good it is. So that's gonna be it for the video. Those are all the makeup products that I love dearly, but reach for very infrequently. A huge thank you to Dominica for sending in that request. Maybe you can tell me about a product that you love intensely in your collection, but you find you never use it. I'd love to hear about that. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye.